Hello again. It's me, Mrs. TK, with another lesson for you from God's Word, the Bible. But first, I have a challenge for you. Name the only thing you can see here that is impossible for me to hold in my right hand. Go ahead, look closely now. Oh, the table doesn't count. But look closely. Name the only thing you see here that is impossible for me to hold in my right hand. Ideas? Give up? Ha! Well, the answer is this. Ha! My right elbow! Seriously, look. I can't. I can hold my right elbow in my left hand. This is my left hand. See? And this is my right hand. See? But I can hold my elbow, right elbow, left hand. But if I try it with my right hand, I can't do it. <laughs> it's impossible for me to hold my right elbow in my right. OK, stop laughing. <laughs> Come on, can you do it? Go ahead, try. I'll wait. No? Hmm. Because it's impossible. I rest my case. There are actually lots of things that are impossible for people to do. We can't, uh, for instance, fly without having a mechanical device of some sort, like this. We can't breathe underwater unless, you know, we've got a snorkel in our mouth, or maybe a scuba diver's oxygen tank. We can't communicate with rabbits. I can tell her all I want if she were a live rabbit, but she wouldn't be able to tell me a thing back. Hmm. And we can't walk all around the world without ever taking a break, physically impossible. But God is different from us. The God that we learn about in Scripture is a God who can do anything and everything. That's our God. There is nothing that is impossible for Him. That's one reason we worship God, because He is so powerful and so creative that He can do anything. In keeping with our theme that nothing is impossible for God, today I want to tell you about an event from the life of Abraham, who we learn about in the Bible. We've been talking about him the past few weeks. Now, my version of the Bible account is a sort of silly skit. Well, it's the true message from the Bible, but it's acted out by some of my puppet friends, some of my lesser known puppet friends, yeah, just to make it fun. So today, playing the role of Abraham, a very old man who loved God, will be Bo Buzzard. That's him. <laughs> Hi, Bo. And playing the role of his wife, Sarah, also very old, a very old woman, will be Sherpa. Sherpa looking good. And playing the role of the three visitors will be these guys. Um, will be these guys. <sighs> guys, that's your cue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're late. These guys, well, I'll introduce them. Um, this is Larry. Hello. Mo. Hello. And Furry. Hi. Cute little guys. Okay, so remember, you're playing the part of the visitors. Um, you're going to be important, so let me put you back in, back, back in your box. You got, <clears throat> no, stop giggling. Get in there. Okay. Be ready. Your part's coming up. Okay. So, a long, long time ago, it tells us in the Bible that 
Abraham was sitting one day outside of his tent. It was probably a hot day. Oh yeah, he had to fan himself. I don't know if that's cooling anybody off, buddy. I told you he's one of my lesser used puppets for a reason. Anyway, uh, Abraham, that's him, was sitting outside his tent when all of a sudden he saw three men standing nearby. Um, guys, guys, you missed your cue again. Oops. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you, you have to pay attention. You, this was your cue. Oh, sorry. Hello. Hello. Hi. <sighs> so Abraham was surprised to see these visitors and he didn't know it, but it was actually God who had come to visit him. Whoa, yeah. Very cool. Abraham hurried over to see the visitors and he said to them, you must be tired. Why, uh, hungry even. Uh, come on back to my place and I'll fix you something to eat. Eh, I'm hungry, me too. Yeah. They all agreed. So they went over to Abraham's tent and Abraham told his wife, Sarah, to fix them some food. Sarah here was an excellent baker. She was fabulous at making bread. Uh, in fact, you could say that at baking, she was outstanding in her field. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Out, outstanding in her field because you're a sheep and you'd be outstanding. Never mind. Anyway, um, so she went about making some wonderful food for the visitors. Now, when the food was ready, Abraham gave it to them and they all had something to eat. <laughs> uh, oh, excuse you. He's very embarrassed. While they were eating, though, one of the visitors said, Where's Sarah, your wife? And Abraham said, Oh, she's over there in the tent. And then these visitors had a serious message. They said, I'll come see you a year from now. And Sarah will have a baby, a baby boy. Yeah. Really? Well, that was kind of a shocker for Abraham. I mean, after all, he and his wife, Sarah, had always wanted a child. And yes, God had promised to give them a child. In fact, God had promised to give them as many offspring as there were stars in the sky, but now they were very, very old. I mean, older than me. Really, hard to believe. Sarah was super old, way too old to have children, which made her sad. And yet here she was hearing these visitors say that a year from now, old, old Sarah would give birth to a baby? Oh my goodness, she couldn't believe it. In fact, she even chuckled to herself. <laughs> because it was just too funny, thinking of having a baby at her age. Ooh, well, a visitor then said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Hmm? He knew. Remember, this visitor was in fact the Lord. And that's when Abraham heard this. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? I tell you, when I come again next year, Sarah will have a baby. A baby boy. Yeah. And would you believe, as amazing as it is, a year later, that is exactly what happened. Exactly what happened. Sarah, in her old age, 
gave birth to a child, a child they had wanted for so long. Isn't that amazing? We serve a God who is amazing, who can do the impossible. Look who I've got with me now. One of my more popular puppet pals, Webster. Say hi, Webster. Hi, guys. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> it's good to see you. You seem like you're in a very cheerful mood today. <laughs> I, I really am. I mean, a seriously good mood. Like, it's like one of the best things that could have happened. Wow. What is it that happened? Um, could, oh, did school get canceled for all of next week? Eh, no, that's, that, that's not it. Hmm. Did, oh, I know you like basketball. Did, did you shoot a hundred baskets in your driveway? Hmm. Oh, no, not today. Uh, maybe I'll try that this weekend. Hmm. Well, then I really can't guess. You tell me what happened that was so great. I was riding my bike to the park and I got a flat tire. That was a good thing? It turned out to be a good thing. See, see, I was mad at first cause, cause I really liked my bike and it was, it was all messed up. And I wanted to get to the park. Of course. So, so and I was also sad because, because, you know, my bike didn't work and I was sitting there trying to figure out what to do when suddenly somebody walked by. Who was it? I didn't know. Um, okay. Okay, I know I'm not supposed to talk to strangers, but this was just a kid. A kid I recognized from my classes at school, but... I had never met her before. Oh, so you'd seen her before at school, but but you didn't know her? No, she's new. It turns out, turns out her name is Glinda Goose. And boy, oh boy, is she great. She helped me fix my bike tire. She fixed it. And then and, and then she said, do I want to play Frisbee with her at the park? And I totally did, because because she's like so awesome. She knows really good jokes and stuff. And oh, I found out later she can shoot baskets like nobody's business. I mean, seriously, goose are taller than ducks. Probably why she's better than me. Hmm. They are taller. But it's wonderful to hear that you've, you've made a new friend. Yeah, and, and it all came from something yucky, like, like my bike tire going flat. Huh. You know, Strange as it sounds, God sometimes works like that. He sometimes comes into our life in unusual situations, times when maybe we think things aren't going the way we want. Eh, like my bike. Right. Uh, but sometimes God has a plan in mind, and he can bring people and situations into your life that make things not just okay, but better than ever before. That certainly happened for Abraham, who had been without a child for so long, and then he finally got the child of his dreams. Hmm. Uh, why is that so weird? People have, <laughs> they have children all the time. Yeah, but Abraham was super duper old. Like 40? No, way older. 40 isn't old. Okay, Abraham was like about 100. Whoa, that's old! And Sarah was almost that older self. Whoa, that's ancient! Yeah, more ancient than me, like I told you before. Hmm, well, so something good came for them, even though they didn't expect it? Right. Just like, like I made a new friend when I didn't expect to. Huh, wow. God really does amazing things, doesn't he? He really does. I'm glad you helped the kids learn that point, Webster. Why don't you say goodbye now, because I'd like to pray with them. Goodbye! I'll put you down there. And kids, I would love it if you would fold your hands and think these words in your heart as I say them. 
Heavenly Father, a God as great and powerful and mighty and creative as you are, deserves not just a little bit of our love. You deserve our whole hearts, our whole minds, and our whole lives. You work in our lives every day in so many ways. You heal us when we're sick. You forgive us when we've done wrong. And you connect us to people who can make things better for us even when we don't expect it. Thank you, God, for being so amazing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's all I have today. I'll see you next time.